What's going on guys? Today we are going to be showing eight interesting, some discontinued, some hard to get, some just cool knives. So this is going to be eight cool knives, but first, pocket dump, and let me know in the comments below what you're carrying today. Today I'm carrying my PM2 and my Techno2. Freaking love these knives. First, let's start by a couple knives lent in by Satu Dave. Thank you so much, brother, for constantly sending me some cool stuff. He he really does have a, I would say, slightly overbuilt American style to the knives that he likes. And this is kind of no exception. Now, while this isn't made in America, this is fully custom. This is a SG, I think, gripper. Uh, I, I'll post some information up here. I kind of forgot the details, but I think this is made in Indonesia, but it is a full custom. What's badass about this is not only is the ergonomics in hand, both choked up and non-choked up, despite looking relatively neutral, it almost has that Strider-esque type going on there. It feels great. The action is kind of reminiscent of the EMP Nimble, actually, because you have both the flip, you have the front flip, you have the reverse flick, and you have the thumb flick. So you can really, really fidget with this guy, and A, that's pretty cool. Inside, it's gonna be hard to see, but these are milled titanium scales, and it makes it feel way lighter than it actually looks, yet still feeling relatively robust. Now, I wouldn't call this guy quite overbuilt, as the blade stock here is maybe, what, 140, 150 thousands, but it does come to this razor edge with this awesome hollow grind coming on down this worn cliff. This frag pattern just adds even more style to the gripper. And this knife is pretty cool, but for the price of $750 for the 3.5 inch version or $650 for the 3 inch version, you're really going to have to kind of choke down that price point to get this. Is this awesome? For sure. Do I think it's worth the uh, 750 to 650 that you would get one for? I don't know. I don't know. And that wasn't it failing. That was me kind of getting my fingers stuck. So what happens here if you try to push button this? That's what happens. You end up getting stuck there. But if you flick it, it works just fine. So this is pretty cool. This is the gripper. This was a GoFundMe starter. No, 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 no. That's another one we got on there. Not a GoFundMe. Oh, let's let's move on. So the other one he sent me is this very cool discontinued ZT. I'm having to check it again. The 056. Now, or pfft, the 0456. Now clearly this has somebody else's edge on it because it's damn near a mirror edge. But this is just a tanky little monster. Look at this. All of 160 thousandths if I had to guess. Really, really cool sheep's foot style blade. Super useful. Choil done very well in hand. It feels phenomenal, but it does feel kind of brickish. Let's take a look here. Here's my Techno 2, which is not a thin knife. And you can see it's a little bit thicker than the Techno 2. But cool backspacer going on there. It does feel really good in hand. And, you know, he once said that we don't have the same, <laughs> the same taste. But everything he sent me, I've like gushed over. And this is no exception. All the milling on this titanium. Check that out. Oh man, this is a model that you're like, why did you discontinue this? This is freaking awesome. But let's get on to the next stuff here. Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to my Knife Party crew. This is our, all, everybody who really just sent in this loaner box. And it's going around in the pass around group, but I, I, I am so grateful. Mr. Archer, thank you so much for setting this up, man. Mr. Cowan, thank you so much. Mr. Harrington, thank you. Mr. Howley, thank you. Mrs. Ellen and Mrs. Lewis, thank you guys so, so much. And if I missed anybody, I'm kind of going through the book. I apologize for not reading your name, but thank you guys for being a part of this and letting me check these out. So very, very cool. Let's check out the first knife. This is the Alliance Design Slim Pickens. Now, what's really cool about this is the guy who sent this actually sent out the mini, and I really, really loved the mini. And he ended up putting the large size Pickens in there. It's not the, the mini Slim Pickens. This is the Slim Pickens, if I had to guess. And it is gorgeous. You got this really, really deep hollow grind going on this blade, coming down to a super thin behind the edge, despite starting out with what I'm guessing is 150 to 160 thousandths. Button lock that, as you can tell, just works like a charm. The detent 
push button works great. Can we fail it? Uh, yeah, but it, you have to try. If I'm just flipping it, oh my gosh, is this action fantastic. And yes, I just reverse flicked it out the blade. I don't think you can do that without gloves, though. So the action on this is phenomenal. The guts have some really cool milling, which I wish you guys could see. It It's actually A-shaped. We have some scalloping going on down the sides, or shallow chamfering, one or the other. And all in all, this is a really, really cool knife. And I'm going to guess it's extremely useful with this deep, deep belly and this deep hollow grind. Oh man, this thing's cool. If I had to choose the Slim Pickens or the Mini Slim Pickens, I think I would still go for the Mini, because this is a lot of knife for your pocket. But, if you're one of those guys that like a larger knife, I think this would be the one for you. Next on the list is the Spyderco Drunken. I've already shown this on the channel. Ooh, look at that. We got some anno going on in the pocket clip there. Super cool. And the Pivot Hardware's anno too. I didn't notice that till just now. It's like a lightning anno. That's awesome. This knife is phenomenal, and if I didn't need to trade mine, I, I wouldn't have, but because I had, you know, some stuff going on and I didn't want to use it, it ended up getting sold or traded. But this is a $550 knife that, you know, I actually think deserves that price point. We have a liner on this side and just a steel frame lock on this side, but the ton of milling, some awesome awesome milling in the carbon fiber of this side. We have an S90V blade, and with Spyderco, I trust that. With S90V, I would I would be very interested in sharpening Spyderco's S90V. So this action is a little tight. With mine, I kind of tuned it out so that it was pretty damn good. This one, I don't want to take apart because it does belong to somebody else, but uh, I'm pretty sure that with a little bit of TLC, they can get this action just right. I absolutely love the Drunken. This is like one of those knives that could be your forever knife because it takes care of everything. In my opinion, this is a next evolution Kershaw bare knuckle. This is just phenomenal. And that's not a diss. The bare knuckle is a fantastic knife. Next on the list is something that I'm super stoked that I got to hold because Corey's going to kill me. This is a knife that I was going to purchase off of Corey over there at the Practical Blade, and thanks to holding this, I'm not going to anymore, and he's probably going to punch me in the face for that. But this is the Chaburkov Scout. Now, this thing's pretty cool. We got some cool milling patterns going on both sides of the titanium. The lock bar relief's on the inside, so it keeps it nice and clean. A nice shallow pocket clip, but it is milled titanium, so that's cool with a backspacer and a lanyard hoop. Now, the problem here... There is no problem, and this is in Damascus, look at that. I don't know if this is Damasteel or not, but oh my goodness, this is gorgeous. In hand, very neutral, very nice feeling, and you know what? The insides are not milled out, which, you know, it, you know, for a knife at this price, I wish they would have been. There's a stainless steel lock bar insert, and the action is just oh so beautiful. This is another knife that feels incredible in hand. It's just kind of boring to me. There's something a little boring about this that, and I'm sorry for this, whoever's knife this is in the box. Uh, it, 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 having felt so many titanium frame locks, this is awesome, but at the price point that Chaburkov's coming in at, I just... I don't know. It, it ends up being just a little bit boring to me. Now, that doesn't discredit the knife. I think this knife is absolutely phenomenal. In hand, like I said, feels great. Great blade shape, this beautiful drop point with this full flat grind going on there. And you can really actually feel, even through the gloves, that uh, Damascus pattern there. It feels really, really nice. So this is a really cool knife. And for the price, I, I, I would have to guess this is coming in around 550 with the Damascus. If that's Damasteel, you're looking at 650, 700. I just don't know if I would pay that. If I found it on the secondary for like 400, would I pay for it? Probably with the Damascus, but I don't think I'm going to go out on a limb and pay 500 for Corey. He's going to kill me. Uh, but this thing's pretty cool. Next on the list is one that I had to look up as to what it was, but I knew based on this flipper tab alone and the action, and then all of a sudden, hey, it's a Ray Laconico design. If you guys can see it there. Oh, yeah. And you know what's weird is all that kind of was a point, and then I put it in hand, and I'm like, this really feels Ray Laconico, but I saw the Tonto, and I'm like, I don't recognize too many Tontos from Ray Laconico. I believe this is the Easy e from Alliance Designs, 
and it is a Ray Laconico design. This is super cool. We got some micarta going on here with titanium bolsters, and I love Ray Laconico's access because he does this on a lot of his stuff. Remember the OG? He does this too, where it looks small, but it's scalloped on the inside on either side, and it just works oh so good. The action on this is beautiful. Check this out, just a little, boop, and it just rockets out there. It's insane, no back and forth, no up and down, despite having this badass action. It doesn't appear to have a lock bar insert, but that's all right. The centering is absolutely perfect. This is a pretty cool little knife, probably one of my favorite Tontos that I've ever seen. And this does appear to have somebody else's edge on it because it is damn near a mirror edge too. So there's that. This is the Ray Laconico Easy E. I don't know how much these were coming in for. If I had to guess around 250, and this is just pretty cool. If I could pick one up and not be a Tonto, I would totally do it. I, I really enjoy this guy. Next on the list is a Wii knife that I never had the chance to feel, and it, it wasn't really on my radar. But having feel like eh, having felt it already, this is pretty awesome. This is the Wii Angst. Now this is a nasty looking little blade, right? Look at that nasty dagger ground blade. Now it is not sharpened on both sides, but this side is relatively, you know, thin. But this is the sharp side, and oh my goodness, is this not gorgeous? This is way more gorgeous in person than in pictures. We have some carbon fiber going all the way down for each of the scales, and that's cool. I don't think there's, there's only a liner on the liner lock side here. And then it looks like we have some G10 inlay work going on there. And I will say we did a fantastic job because this looks absolutely gorgeous. The action on this liner lock is pretty amazing. This is a knife that I would have never, ever purchased. But now having felt it, I genuinely really, really enjoy this. It's, it's pretty darn cool. And guys, this is so lightweight. I can't explain to you how light this feels. If I had to guess 2.5, maybe three ounces. I wanna say this was coming in at approximately 200 bucks from Wii. So for that price, do I think something like this is worth it? Just at first impressions? I do, actually. I think it looks pretty sweet. Last on the list is this beautiful guy. Now, I had no freaking clue what this was when I got this in hand. No freaking clue. But it reminds us a lot of Rayot, right? So I kind of knew this was a Rayot OEM work, but I had no idea what this is. This is called the Stunner. In 2021, towards the middle or end, they ran a GoFundMe, and they, this is where this knife comes from. Now, this beautiful beast here has amazing action. Like, the, the lock bar is weak, it feels like, but I don't know that I can fail this. It's, it's so well... Oh, there it is. It's so well tuned for actually having a flipper and thumb studs. Now, the thumb studs, I might not be able to fail. Let's try. Oh, yeah, you can fail a bolt. But, I mean... I'm trying so hard to fail that. Like I've I've gone over so many knives and anyways, access to the thumb studs is fantastic. The ergonomics in the choked up position are amazing. In the non-choked up position, they still feel really, really good. This kind of reminds me of that terrain 365 knife with the way this blade shape is. It's kind of this deep bellied drop point style, spear point, I guess is more the right term, and full flat grind here with this beautiful finish on this blade. Check this out. Oh man, is that not gorgeous? And the action, oh goodness, you guys see that? You could expect nothing less from Rayat. And the guy whose knife this was, he messaged me and he's like, hey, did you get that knife in yet? And I'm like, what's this talking about? You know, I got these in and I was trying to hold off a little bit to do a video, but you know us, inevitably I ended up uh, pulling it out and checking it out. And oh man, is this thing cool. So what we actually have here, it looks like a carbon fiber, but it doesn't feel like carbon fiber. It's like this rock ground pattern with these inlays. And this inlaid work is done so well. The blade actually matches the finish of the frame lock, which is really, really cool. And I'm a sucker for these uh, teal green colors with the most Rayat models. I think they just look absolutely amazing. This is easily one of my favorites that came out of the box. This is, this is so freaking cool. 
this knife is is really something else out of the eight that i checked out these two are probably my favorite we got the zt0456 lent in by satu dave thank you so much man for letting me check this out and the Stunner, which is a Rayop made. I believe this one's the SG Designs. I, I don't remember. But this is the GoFundMe knife. And this one is... Oh, so I didn't even mention the Crown Spine. Ah, a little lackluster jimping here. They put some jimping, but I'm not sure that you quite need it. But everything else about this is just so damn good. Super, super cool. That's all I got for you guys. You guys stay sharp. Stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. In the comments below, if you're still here, let me know which one's your favorite.